Hey guys, Ivan here and today I have a couple of very interesting topics to talk about. So first of all, let's talk about Jaina or formerly known as Matt Croc, bodybuilder slash powerlifter, very famous in the industry. Maybe you remember him or now it is her and uh, he was a powerlifter. So he invented those Croc rows, for example, and he was really popular in the industry. He was a great bodybuilder and powerlifter as well, very strong, but then he became she. And now this is Jaina Kroc, I believe, and I should be referring to her as a woman because she changed her gender. I'm not really sure about these things, I'm not really educated well enough, but I believe this is how it works. So it was he, it was Matt Kroc, and now Matt Kroc decided to change the gender, and now this is Jaina Kroc, a woman. So. Yeah, a transgender. And uh, apparently she is uh, doing a bodybuilding competition now. It is very sensitive subject to talk about and I'm not like Louis Marco. I don't have anything against these people. Whatever they want to do, they can do and I support them fully. Anyways, you can see here on the left uh, photo, this is Matt Kroc and he was jacked. He was huge. He was super big and super strong. And then later after the surgery, she downsized. I'm really confused about this he or she thing. Anyways, uh, she downsized and she looked much smaller, much more feminine. But then later, as you can see, actually today, she looks much more muscular, jacked, huge, actually. Very good. And uh, I'm sure she will do well at her bodybuilding competition in male's division. But she is not identifying herself as a man, but as a woman, although she's competing in a male division. It's a bit confusing, I know, but it is what it is. I'm trying to talk calmly about this, but when it happened, I was a huge fan of Matt Kroc. And then when he changed the gender, I was really confused. And it was a couple of years ago, I was even younger, so I didn't understand what the hell was going on. It was a really confusing time for me. But it is what it is, we need to try to understand these people because they are what they are and they all deserve to be happy. So guys, I don't want to see any hate comments down below. Please refrain yourself from doing that. Anyways, let's go to the next topic and that's Sean Roden your current Mr. Olympia and you all know what is he going through right now. He's accused of rape. He is battling this uh, at court and we'll see what happens in the end. But apparently he is still competing. As he said, he's still preparing for the Mr. Olympia, even though he was banned. So he's probably hoping, I'm sure he talked to the Mr. Olympia organizers. They probably told him that there is a chance of him actually competing. I'm sure he wouldn't be doing this, you know, just for nothing. I'm sure he wouldn't just be risking it. They probably told him if his name is cleared by the time Mr. Olympia comes. If somehow it turns out not to be the case, what this woman is accusing him of, maybe he will actually still be competing. So I'm looking forward to that. I really hope that happens because this Olympia is lacking a lot of good competitors. And if Sean comes still after this whole drama and controversy, he would not be the greatest representative of the sport. For example, Brandon Curry would be much better for that position. I know, I know, politics shouldn't have nothing to do with it, but I guess that's the case. I guess it is, because bodybuilding is a business, especially Mr. Olympia, and they don't want their representative to be accused of anything of that sort. So probably, even if he shows up, the best case scenario he will be second. I don't know if he even has time to actually prepare to look the best on that stage, because he will have to look great if he wants to beat guys like Brandon Curry and Rolly Winkler and William Bonek. And he had a lot on his plate recently, so he's probably not focused perfectly on one goal. All that trouble also required his physical presence, so he probably skipped a few meals here and there and a couple of shots as well. So I'm sure we're gonna see him not at his best if he somehow manages to compete at this year's Mr. Olympia. Anyways, Sean Roden needs your help, as you can see right here. So he's basically calling everybody who was there at that competition when the incident allegedly happened. So if you guys were there, any of you approach him, text him on Instagram or whatever, he needs your help. So help him out if you can. So go to his Instagram account, read the full description of this post and see what it is all about. In the meantime, we can see somebody who is preparing to win the Tampa Pro and maybe even win the Mr. Olympia. And that's your soon-to-be 50-year-old Mr. Olympia 2008, Dexter Jackson. And here you can see his arm, which is looking swollen as hell. Look at the size of that arm. Look at the forearm. Look at the tricep, the sweep. I mean, this is really full. 
he looks great, honestly. I mean, based on all we saw so far, all the physique updates, he should surprise us. He should improve his physique. I said it before and I'm gonna say it again. It is not impossible. It wouldn't be too big of a surprise, but the chances are not in his favor exactly. How many 50-year-olds have we seen winning the Mr. Olympia so far? <laughs> no one, not even close. So it would be a huge surprise if we actually see him improved from last year or last couple of years. And if he can even crack like top two, top three or something like that, that would be crazy. But it wouldn't be too surprising because he surprised us too many times now. And at this point, we know much better to doubt him. He is one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him in this Tampa Pro. And then afterwards at the Mr. Olympia. While we're talking about the older guys potentially surprising us, let's talk about the younger guys doing the same thing. So here you can see Nick Walker. And this guy, this dude, he's 24 years old. He's like only one year older than me. And he has three times more mass than I do. And I train hard as hell. And <laughs> this guy is an absolute beast. And he didn't turn pro at this show. This was USA's. He looked great for sure, but he didn't really win. Because this guy on the right, who is probably much older than him, looked a little bit sharper, a little bit better. And in some poses, for example, this one, Nick is absolutely destroying him. I mean, they're not even doing the same pose, but uh, Nick really shows a lot of thickness, a lot of density in this pose, most muscular. His uh, abs are looking very prominent. That's, that's strange for a guy of his size. He should have a blown up gut, but he doesn't. His abs are really in check. His legs, very detailed. He's huge, a huge guy, huge potential in him. It's pretty obvious at this point that he's going to be the next big thing, something like Dallas McCarver. But how much are these gains from just lifting heavy and eating right and being focused? And how much are they from drugs? I mean, look at him here. Look at his beast. He's looking like a hog. God damn. And he's only 24. So it could be just genetics. It could be super focus. It could be who knows what. But it could be drugs. And if it is drugs, if he's pushing them super, super crazy like Dallas did, you know, maybe he doesn't live up to the hype. I mean, live up, literally. Anyways, he's a huge potential right now, and I hope he stays healthy, somewhat healthy, healthy enough to survive, to survive his journey and eventually become maybe even a Mr. Olympia, or at least to show up at the Mr. Olympia stage. But I think he will get there. I'm sure he will show up at the Mr. Olympia stage. And how long will he last? That's the question. I really hope all goes well for him and I wish him all the best and I'm looking forward to seeing him progress in the years to come. On the other side of bodybuilding, on the professional stage, we have somebody who is probably, most likely, this year achieving their ultimate goal of becoming the Mr. Olympia champion and that's Derek Lansard. As you can see, he's not hiding a damn thing. He's posting a full pose routine of his, he's showing all the poses basically and you can see, he is in shape, he's getting ready. It's only the question of conditioning for him, because he's freaking huge. I don't know about you guys, but I can't really imagine this guy being like two heads shorter than me. I can't really imagine that. He seems like much bigger than me, but he's actually much taller. But the amount of muscle that he's packing on his small frame is insane. He's insane. He looks like a Mr. Olympia already. And I'm pretty sure he's winning it. It's pretty obvious at this point. I mean, look at him. Look at the fullness, the, the details, the... The density of his muscles. He's very thick and he's also very mature. If everything goes well as planned, there is pretty much no doubt that this guy is winning 2019 Mr. Olympia. The only guy who could upset him would be Harry Chopin if he gets the visa and if he decides to compete in 212, which is unlikely to happen. So it's pretty obvious this is your 2019 212 Mr. Olympia champion. But before that happens, we have Tampa Pro, and this guy is one of the contenders, Hassan Mostafa. And I'm pretty sure that Hassan is almost the same height as Derek. And he doesn't look bigger at all. They look pretty much the same size to me. The thing is, it's probably bone density. I think Hassan is just heavier, and that's why he can't compete at 212 pounds. He's probably much heavier, and that's why he chooses the open. And also, he can do great in the open. He can do great, because... He beat Luke Sando at this Indie Pro this year. So, come Tampa, if Luke doesn't bring perfect conditioning, and I'm sure Hassan will do that, you know, Hassan can beat him. It's going to be the question if he can beat Dexter, though, but we'll see. It depends on Dexter. So, 
this guy can potentially win the Tampa. He's one of the big contenders. And me personally, I really do like his physique. I mean, he is blocky, many people dislike him for that. But uh, look at the, those bellies on his arms. Look at the fullness. Oh, look at those legs, first of all. This is the best legs in bodybuilding today. One of the best legs. Probably the best, actually. Really, I mean, the, the thickness of them is just insane. They're super huge. Super huge wheels. And his chest is separating there. There is a little bit of a gap there, sure. But it's very good chest still. And the arms are freaking full. The lats on him are crazy. I'm really curious what this guy has to bring in the future years to come. And I'm even more curious to see your future Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this guy is winning it. I mean, pretty much everybody is seeing that at this point. I mean, just look at this guy. Look at the, the, the muscle maturity, the, the thickness, the, the roundness. Name it, you name it, everything is spot on. Except for his legs that are a little bit smaller, but not small enough to prevent him from winning. Yeah, the legs are his weakness, but this year, 2019 Arnold Classic, he improved them. And I'm sure they're gonna be a little bit fuller this time at the Mr. Olympia. But his upper body, he, he's just upper body dominant. <laughs> That's the best way to put it, because his arms are full as hell. What is wrong with those arms? They're full as hell. His back, third best back of this millennium. Ronnie Coleman, Phil Heath, and then Brandon Curry. I mean, look at him. Look at the, the size of this guy, the fullness and everything. This physique really impresses me. I mean, first of all, the fullness of those arms. I mean, me personally, I really like to see big arms. You know what they say, back and legs win the shows, but a good pro has great arms. And if you want to be Mr. Olympia, you need to have great arms. Back and legs are definitely the priority, but if you don't have arms, you will not place as well. The only exception to that would be Dorian Yates, but Dorian's back was a class above the other guys' backs. And the same thing was pretty much with his legs and overall mass. Today, we don't have really exactly that, so you need to have great arms. Every good pro must have them, and Brandon is leading in that regard, and he has probably the best arms today, the fullest, the most aesthetically and pleasingly looking. And also, look at those uh, shoulders. Look at those lines and striations on them and the fullness. Really beautiful physique. And the thing that actually sets him apart from all those other bodybuilders is his super tiny small waist. Not a trace of a bubble gut. Not a trace. Sean Rodden was known for having a small waist, but he had a bit of a bulge in his lower part of the abdomen. That's not the case with Brandon. Brandon's stomach is flat through and through, and uh, it is very small, and it makes his whole entire physique look even more impressive. And I'm pretty sure this is your 2019 Mr. Olympia, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna remain there for quite some time. But that's a big statement, we cannot be sure about this. We'll see. We'll see in a couple of months. Anyways, tell me what you guys think about all these things. Do you think Brandon is your next Mr. Olympia? What do you think about uh, Jaina Kroc? What do you think about Dexter? What do you think about Tampa Pro at all? Do you think uh, Nick Walker deserved a pro card? Do you think Derek Lansford is winning 212 2019 Mr. Olympia? Whatever triggered you the most, <laughs> comment about it in the comment section down below. I'll answer to all of your comments, at least I'm gonna read them all, that's for sure. Anyways guys, if you want to see more content like this, you just need to know, I'm uploading videos every single day. And I'm very fast, very quick, so don't miss out on those, subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it. All the best guys, bye bye.